Hi everyone, I am so excited for our video today, mainly because I want to show you guys the brushes that I got from Hakuhodo when I went to their store in Tokyo a few weeks ago. Now, I've already shown you guys some of these brushes in a previous vlog. Um, it is actually my Tokyo haul vlog, but I didn't talk about these brushes individually on that vlog because if I did, that vlog is going to be so long and I didn't want to pain you guys with a very long vlog. So, um, And I also think that these brushes really deserve their own video because after all, it's going to be more concise and precise and of course I can give you guys the reasons on why I decided to get these brushes but anyway before we continue if you guys are interested to see the other things that I got when I went to Tokyo a few weeks ago I'm gonna put a link down on the description box in my Tokyo haul vlog so you can go and check it out for yourself and also one other thing as you guys can see I am NOT in my home in Metro Manila at this time but I am actually in my home here in the province of Marin Duque and if you've been following me here on YouTube YouTube for quite some time you would know that every so often I would come to my home here and like you know spend my time here with my partner and my dogs now um, this is not the usual place where I do vlogs when I am here so I'm in one of the rooms and the main reason why is because my boyfriend is currently using the room as his office like you know the room where I usually vlog as his home office so I needed to find some place where I could like you know vlog when I am here so I am hoping that this is going to be a good location and I'm just trying to gauge if like you know the light is registering well for our vlog today and if it does I'm going to be using this room and also one other thing um, I'm using a mix of natural light and artificial light for our vlog today so I hope this will work for us so I'm praying that the light is going to be okay for our vlog today but anyway uh, what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to flip my camera over and then let's talk about these brushes one by one and also to some comparisons that I have in my makeup kit okay so this is the majority of my haul from Hakuhodo and as you guys can see I have a lot of doubles and the majority of this haul is actually like you know brushes related to eyeliner application on the eyes and this is what I'm going to be talking about first I'm going to put these to the side okay so I have now all of the brushes that I'm going to be using to apply like you know eyeliner on the eyes may it be for powder or even for gel type. So these six brushes here are the brushes that I'm going to be using to apply gel types of eyeliners on the eyes. And I'm going to be talking about these first. I'm gonna put these to the side here. Okay, so what I have noticed with the eyeliner brushes from Hakuhodo is that they always come with a cap here, which is actually great because it just keeps the integrity of the tips of your brushes because a lot of things can happen with your brushes especially if you use them for like you know eyeliner application because if you like you know keep them in a brush kit or like you know in a brush envelope sometimes the tips gets distorted because of the way like you know it gets like you know settled into the case or it just gets hit by a cap things like that so um i always try to keep these caps with me for as long as possible but the end of the matter is i always end up losing them so um, i always tend to enjoy them while i still have them now as you guys can see here there are different brush lengths for these brushes that i have with us today oops and basically what i understood with this purchase is that hakuhodo sometimes depending on the line of the brush that you actually purchase um they have different brush lengths that you can choose from i mean the handle length that you can choose from so this brush here has the short handle these brushes here have the medium sized handle and these brushes here have the long sized handle and also one other thing they also have a difference in like you know the design of the handle itself wherein this one looks to be a little bit chubbier this one looks to be a little bit slimmer and then the other pairing of this looks to be a little bit chubbier as well and then these two brushes here have a slim type of handle so i believe when you go to like you know the hakuhodo website or even on their physical store you can actually choose which type of like you know handle design you want do you want it a little bit slimmer you want it to be chubby or you want it to be rounder so if you want to know more about the different types of handle designs just go and check out the um, hakuhodo website it's gonna be there all the information that you have is there okay so what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna show you guys one brush from each of my purchase because basically these are doubles so the first brush that we have here let me remove the cap so this is the eye 
007N3 and the bristle of this is actually very small. Can you guys even see that here on the screen? I hope you can. Now, what I like about this brush is that it's actually small enough for me to apply gel eyeliner here in the inner corner of the eye because the brush head is actually quite small. And I have also noticed that the bristle here is actually still soft, which is actually great because at least in that way, it will not add like, you know, extra pressure into the eyelid and make your like, you know, application of the gel eyeliner to be uncomfortable. But it is also like strong enough to be able to pick up and to like, you know, deliver the gel eyeliner quite nicely in this delicate portion of the eye so that's it very beautiful so as you guys can see i hope you can see that nice strength into the bristles it is soft but strong enough and it keeps its shape quite nicely i have to say all right so let me just put that to the side here okay the next brush that i have here this is the brush i190 N5. I love the reflectivity of the um, labels here. Nice silver tone and it has like, you know, this nice shift. But anyway, we're not going to be talking about the label. Okay, so as you guys can see here, this one has a much more longer brush tip in comparison to the 007 N3. Okay, and the reason why I chose this it's because and I can actually use this to apply like, you know, detailing work here if I want to create a flick in the outer corner of the eye or like, you know, if I want to create a thick eyeliner, this is great to use or even like, you know, for any sort of like, you know, artistic or detailing work, this brush is actually good to use as well. Now, what I have noticed with the tip of this brush head is that it's actually quite strong. It's not as soft as the 007N3, okay? And... Um, I really need that, especially if I want to add detailing work on the eyeliner for the outer corner of the eye. So that's actually very important. And I love the tip here. It's quite, you know, sharp. And it kind of keeps its shape quite nicely. Can you guys see the strength in the core of that? It's actually quite uh, pretty. And also one thing, by the way, that I have realized, like, you know, before making this video, because I did some research, um, because these brushes were actually not the brushes that I had on my list when I went to Hakohodo to purchase them. So these were basically not in my radar, but when I was at the Hakohodo store, um, when I saw them, I actually decided to get them because they were actually what I was looking for. But anyway, so the reason why I would like to talk to you guys about this is that if you guys can see here, there's the label N3 and N5. So basically the brush number of this is I190. And this brush here is I007. So the N3 and the N5 here is actually an indicator of the softness and the strength of the eyeliner brush that you want to purchase. So the softest eyeliner brush that you can get from this brush line, from these two brush lines, is actually the N1. And then you have the N2, N3, N4, N5. N5 being like, you know, the most resilient and less soft, while the N1 is going to be the softest um, synthetic brush that you can get on this brush line. So N3 here is basically like, you know, the median in terms of softness and strength, while N5 here means that it's not soft, but it's actually very resilient. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's hard. It just means that it is actually stronger. So um, I think that's a very great uh, way of actually like, you know, labeling their eyeliner brushes because it just gives you a different kind of variety to choose from depending on the type of like you know if you have very sensitive eyelids and go and get the like you know n1 version of these eyeliner brushes or like you know if you can handle it then go for an n3 or even go for an n5 but i think an n5 is great for people who are more into like you know artistry wherein you add a lot of detailing work for your eyeliner or eyeshadow application process okay all right, and the last brush I have here, let me remove the cap. And now this is the G007. And what makes this brush special is that it's made of weasel. And if you've been following me here on my channel for quite some time, you'd know that weasel hair is one of my most favorite things to use on like, you know, brushes. So the tip here is actually very small and very slim. It's almost comparable to the 007N3 here. But I could say that the G007 here is actually longer in the tip 
in comparison to the I007N, which is this brush here. And in terms of softness of the brush head, I can say that the G007 here is actually quite soft and also quite resilient. There's a very nice snap back into position here. I can really feel it. I don't know if it, I don't know if you can see it here on the screen, but it's actually quite nice and soft, but strong at the same time. So which is a, which is kind of actually kind of good in my book. Now I'm just gonna pick up the 007N3 here, and then I'm gonna pick up the um, 190N5 here. So I basically have three different types of like, you know, um, bristle length where in the this brush here is shorter this one here like you know has a medium length and this one has a much more longer length so these three brushes will enable me to apply a different type of like you know density intensity and maybe detailed work for eyeliners on the eyes so I'm actually very excited to try them out for us today okay next these are the brushes that I would like to use to apply much more detailed eyeshadow work on the eyes and i have actually been looking for these types of like you know basically eyeshadow brushes for a very long time wherein they're actually very small and very detailed okay so i'm going to remove the doubles okay and i'm going to start by talking about this brush here and this is the g5515 brush and as you guys can see here, the tip of the bristle of this brush is actually very small. And according to the website, this is actually made of horse hair. And in terms of resiliency and softness, it feels very soft on my fingers here, which is actually quite amazing. And I can feel some strength in the belly here. So this will actually keep its shape quite nicely. Now, as I've said, these are the smallest eyeshadow brushes that I have in my collection because if I was going to compare this tip to the other, like, you know, um, because if you guys can see here, it's almost like a pencil type of a uh, eyeshadow brush. And if I'm just going to put, like, like, say, this, like, you know, Sonia G pencil one right beside it, I'm sure you guys can already see the difference of the, um, like, you know, size of the brush head okay so um this is actually the wrong brush for me to compare this to hang on let me come back okay i think the pencil pro from sonia g is more appropriate so as you guys can see here their bristles like you know the brush head design is almost the same because it has a much more rounder tip here not as pointy as the other one and also i have this mizuho brush here oh my god i forgot the name of this and as you guys can see it also has that same like you know rounded shape but this one is just pointier now the thing is um these two brushes sometimes i find to be a little bit too big to use on the eyes i can just basically use these two like you know pencil brushes for applying like you know detailing work in the outer corner of the eyelids but i couldn't really uh, use it to apply like you know detailing work in like you know the lower um lash line area in the outer portions or even in the inner portions and, and that's the reason why i was so attracted to this brush is because i believe that this can just do that kind of work that i need to do on the eyes and I also believe that this can provide good, like, you know, buffing ability. If I just want to smudge eyeliners, I can use this. Again, the brush head is very small, so it's very detailed kind of a smudging process. And I can also use this if I want to apply, like, you know, highlighters here in the inner corners. It's just a perfect size for it, even here in the lower lash line. So again, this is made of horse, so it's still soft, but it's also strong enough. And I'm actually quite excited to try this out a little bit later as well, okay? And then the other brush that I have here, this is the G5512 brush. And this is also the smallest smudger brush that I have in my collection. And the bristle here is actually made of horse. And it's actually very resilient. I don't know if you guys can see that on the way that it registers on the film. When it moves here on my fingertips, they all move in unison and they keep their shape quite nicely. And that's actually one of the things that's very important for me when I want a smudger brush because I like, you know, I don't want, I'm very specific with my eyeliner application. And if I just want to buff the edge a little bit, I really don't want the bristles to splay out so much because that means it's gonna buff out, like, you know, in the area where I don't necessarily want it to buff out. Okay, very beautiful. Because again, in comparison, 
this is my Chikohodo R-SL4. So I'm sure you guys can see the difference in size there. And then I also have this S144 brush from Hakodo. So again, you guys can see that. Now, I remember that when I actually talked about this brush in a video one time, I actually love the density of this. I love the like you know, strength of this brush, but I wish that it was actually like, you know, smaller, shorter, and not as wide. And I actually got my wish when I saw this brush in Hakuhodo because look at that. The detailing work that you can use this brush for is going to be amazing. And it's going to be very useful for those of you who like to apply like, you know, colors into like, you know, your lower lash line or upper lash line and you want to diffuse them. This can be actually it, especially in the inner corner of the eyes. I believe this would be very useful for you. Now, the other brush that I purchased doubles at Hakuhodo during this trip of mine was actually the J146 brush. Now, I have to tell you guys that the J146 is actually one of my most favorite eyeshadow brushes to use at work. And it's one of the most important brushes that I have in my collection that I actually bring with me all the time to work. Now, I do love the size of the bristle here. It's actually quite small and it's quite like, you know, dense. And it's also quite strong in the belly as you guys can see that. And I actually love the tips of the bristles here, especially when it has bloom. So let me get my old J146 here, which I hauled a long time ago. And as you guys can see here, when it fully blooms, the tips of the bristles here have this very nice rounded shape, but it has this like, you know, very small sharp tip here, like, you know, a pointy tip, which is actually very helpful when you want to use it to apply colors in like, you know, the socket line and also to blend it out at the same time. And I do love the small shape of this brush head because at least I can use it not only for people who have small eyelids, but I can use it also for people who have big eyelids, but I want to like, you know, smoke out a detailed eyeshadow application or just apply a soft wash of color so this brush here has actually proved to be quite like you know um versatile for me now as you guys can see here the handle lengths are different and the handle designs are also very different again you can actually choose which handle you want um when you are like you know purchasing them now um i actually like like you know that the recent J146 brushes that I purchased are these like, you know, chubbier handles because they're, they, they fit very well into my hand here and I can maneuver them. Uh, it moves very well in my hands. Now, the longer type here is actually not so bad at all. So like, you know, if I hold it this way, then I have less pressure on the eyelid with I'm applying color. So, I mean, again, the handle size and length and like, you know, the design will all depend on your personal preference. Now, just for a slight comparison, let me show you guys, like, you know, um, some other types of, like, you know, these blending brushes, quote unquote, from my collection. Okay, so this is the J146, right? And let me just show you guys the size difference of the bristles here in comparison to other, like, you know, blending brushes that I have in my collection. I hope you guys can see that clearly. There are quite a lot on my hands right now, so I beg your pardon for that. So the J146 here is actually not a small brush head because it's actually bigger than the soft definer from, like, you know, um, Sonia G. If I'm just going to put them side by side here so you just have an idea. And they almost share the same brush head design wherein there's a slight like you know pointy tip here in the middle of the brush head which is actually cool okay and then what other types of brush heads that i can compare it to maybe these brushes here okay before i talk about these brushes i'm just going to put the mini booster here so that you guys can see again the difference in brush head length so this is the mini booster this is the lotus soft definer from sonya g and this is the hakuhodo j146 brush so the j146 is slimmer but eventually it's going to bloom almost the same way as the um, mini booster from sonya g but the bristles are just softer and longer and airier because the mini booster here 
is actually quite dense. Just slightly denser than the J146 here. Okay. All right. Now, these two brushes I'm going to put to the side because the brush head designs here are very different, wherein they're actually rounder and they don't have a sharpened a tip here at the middle of the brush head. Okay, so let me put these two to the side now. Okay, and let me get, what is this? Okay, this is the Crease Pro from Sonia G. So the Crease Pro is actually like, you know, shorter, but it's denser in comparison to the J146. So let me just get the other J146. So the J146 here, especially when it has like, you know, fully bloomed, it has actually more airiness in it. So what I have here is the Hakuhodo S142 brush. But you know, this is made of a uh, blue squirrel. So it's, uh, it's not a nice comparison to do. But again, I'm just gonna put them side by side here just so that you guys can see like, you know, the difference in brush head length and also the way that it actually blooms over time. Okay, so this is the Sonia G Crease 2. So the Crease 2 has just like, you know, much more longer bristles and it blooms like, you know, here. It starts to bloom here on this portion of the brush head and then it tapers into a point here and it retains its shape quite nicely actually. And this is how the J146 looks like beside it when it's fully bloomed. So again, they're almost the same, but there's just more density in the Sonia G Crease 2 here, wherein for sure this will actually like, you know, pick up and blend out um, colors strongly and, you know, with a purpose in comparison to the J146. Okay, and the final brush that I have here, this is from Mizuho, but this is actually made of like, you know, gray squirrels. Again, it's not a good comparison to make. But I'm just putting it here so that you guys can see the difference between, like, you know, the brush head shape. And I guess you guys can also see, uh, like, I actually love these types of brush head designs. Wherein they actually have a certain type of airiness. And it's actually quite easy to use because they really help me to apply colors quite nicely. And of course, the intensity of the color application will always depend on, like, you know, the bristle length. And you know the bristle type and also like you know the density of the said bristles so this one I just loved it like you know the J146 because it's just like you know a total like you know all-around type of brush head wherein I can use it to apply soft colors or even more intense and I can also diffuse it at the same time okay all right and the next brush that I have here is the G6081 brush and as you guys can see here, like, you know, from this uh, vantage point, by the way, it almost looks like it's a blending brush because it has, like, you know, it, it flares out and it has a rounded dome shape here. But when we put it to the side, we can actually see that it, like, you know, tapers in such a manner wherein, like, um, as, when it starts to flare out, it also starts to diminish in terms of, like, you know, um, density on the bristles here and it goes to a sharp point. And it's actually quite straight here at the back. And again, it's almost like, you know, the pads of your fingers, which I actually like. And it's almost very similar to this um, Tanseido brush here, if you put them to the side, or even here. But of course, like, you know, the brush design is very different. And of course, the bristle type or the hair type that's used is also very different. But then again, as I've said, when I got this brush is that this type of a brush head design is not something that I usually have in my collection. And when I saw this, I was reminded of this and I go like, oh, I think I can use this brush for a highlighter application on the eyelid. And I don't have this kind of a mix of hairs in my collection. I think I have two others in my brush kit at the moment, okay? Look at that, very nice and very pretty. And also just for comparison, this is the Hinoki brush from Sonia G. So they're quite different because the Sonia G here, the way it flares out, it's not, it doesn't flare out in a straight manner, but it flares out, it fans out a little bit and then it goes up an angle. While this brush here, the G6018 brush, it goes up straight, especially when we're looking this on the side, it goes up straight and then it goes up at an angle. So again, the tips here can be also be very helpful for applying detailing work. Hmm. I'm actually quite excited to try this out. All right, and the final brush that we have here is the S102 brush. 
and but you just look at this very beautiful brush and the brush head here is made of 100% blue squirrel and if you take a look at it at the side the bristle tips here has a certain amount of airiness to it so it just adds into this very soft nature of this brush but I'm sure you guys can see how it snaps back into position quite nicely but the softness here will actually not like you know give you enough buffing ability so if you're someone who likes to buff color into the face this brush is not for you but if you are someone who has sensitive skin this brush is going to be great for you okay and um what else can i talk about this brush here very beautiful brush it has a substantial weight to it very nice balance on the hand look at that so the weight is equal so it's very comfortable then i love the chubby handle here because i can just really hold it and of course we still have the like you know very nice trademark of the s100 vermilion handle series from hakuhodo and it has an angle here and then you have the hakuhodo logo here and you have the name misako uh, also um written at the bottom here very beautiful very beautiful look at that now this is the first time that I have had like a blue squirrel brush from Hakuhodo and I believe this is a very nice like you know addition into my kit because the brush head design here is not something that I have in my collection. I was actually debating getting this and the um, like you know cheek brush and like you know, the prices are not that far from each other. I think it's around 2000 yen more so this brush is 2000 yen more but I'll double check again. But like, you know, as I've said, I am very interested in getting brushes that I don't have in my collection or like, you know, brushes that, you know, brush designs that I don't have. So as you guys can see here, it's quite square. It's not round. So it's not the typical type of like, you know, powder brush that you have in your collection. And when I was like, you know, just twirling this brush for the first time in my hand when I got this after I washed it. So um, it actually kind of reminded me of the Niji Pro from Sonya G. But the Niji Pro from Sonya G here flares out more. Like it's almost like a fan brush. But as you guys can see, the shape are almost the same. Uh, if we put them to the side, we can see that they almost flare quite similarly. But of course, the main difference is that this is made of like, you know, goat hair, dyed and undyed. So it's actually very dense. So this brush here, the Sonya G Niji Pro will have more buffing ability in comparison to the S102 brush from um, Hakuhodo. Look at that. Even here to the top. So we can see that the brush head designs are almost the same wherein they're almost quite, you know, um, oval. But the Hakuhodo brush here has more like, you know, ovoid. So at least with the tips here and this part of the brush, you can use this to apply like, you know, detailing work. If you if you can be able to actually maneuver this brush to apply like you know more intense color like maybe on your cheekbones like that or even like you know on your um temples if you're using this as a bronzer brush okay so let's try these brushes now on the face okay so at this point i'm gonna put on a thin layer of foundation some concealer and powder so that we can like you know play with these brushes one by one so i'm just gonna speed through the process okay Alright, so I have a thin layer of foundation, concealer, and powder down. So I'm just going to let that settle into my skin first before we actually put the S102 into the ringer. So at this point, I'm going to be playing around first with, like, you know, these brushes, like mostly these eyeliner brushes. And I'm just going to show you guys how I envision using them, like, you know, for work. So I'm going to start and use this I007N3 brush. And I'm just going to be picking up some of this gel eyeliner from bobby brown in black to actually apply like you know eyeliner here in the inner corner of the eye and i really like how small it is because it can just really help me to be very detailed with my application now it's actually quite soft and um it's even a little bit ticklish 
So if you have sensitive eyes, this might be an issue for you. But again, like, you know, if you love to wear eyeliners, um, sometimes you just have to sacrifice, <laughs> um, like, you know, the feeling of um, comfort when you actually want to apply very detailed and very thin eyeliner applications on your lash line. And I love the size of this because it will really work with people who have small eyelids or with people who have heavy eyelids like I do. Pardon my dogs, by the way. They will be barking all afternoon. But anyway, with this brush, you can really get in between, like, you know, your lashes. And it can really help you to be more detailed with your, like, you know, eyeliner application. Look at that. So what, how I like to put eyeliner on myself is that I like to apply a very thin layer of eyeliner here. And then just thickening it out a little bit as I reach the outer corner here. And this brush can just really help me do that. Look at very easy. Very easy. I love this brush for that. Okay, so if I actually want to smudge this out, make it like, you know, a little bit smoky, I'm going to get the G5515 brush. And I can just like, you know, smudge the edges here. To make it more like you know sooty and less graphic now i don't find the brush head here to be a little bit uncomfortable even if i'm like you know pressing on it and i'm rubbing it so yeah, it just actually helps to soften up like you know the eyeliner look at that how cool is that okay so um if i actually want to uh, layer on like you know eyeshadows and like you know kind of like set this gel eyeliner i'm going to use this um g5512 brush this is the one that has a like you know it's like a smudger brush and it has a very like you know nice flat brush head and i'm just gonna pick up like maybe let's say this very like you know sooty um eyeshadow and it has like some gold flecks on it and i'm just going to apply this on top of the gel liner just to add some intensity and drama now, I also find that this brush is actually able to hold the pigment quite nicely. And it really doesn't, and it really helps me not to, like, you know, have fallout. Because, like, you know, there are certain brush heads wherein it doesn't hold the pigment nicely, and you actually end up getting a ton of fallout. Especially when you apply, like, you know, eyeshadows on top of gel eyeliners. Okay, so I'm just, like, really working the product into the gel eyeliner just to intensify the, um, like, you know, eyeliner look. And as you guys can see, it's creating a very nice soft appearance already. And this just really helps you to be very detailed with your, like, you know, eyeshadow application. Look at that. So this is the eye with eyeliner, and this is my eye without eyeliner. Okay. All right. So now what I want to do is I just want to add a teeny tiny flick here at the outer corners of my upper lash line. And I'm going to be using the G007 brush for that this brush and this is the one that's actually made of weasel hair and the reason why I'm using this right now is because the um, I190N5 brush is just way too big for me because like you know my eyelid space is actually very small so I need smaller eyeliner brushes to help me to apply detailing like you know eyeliner looks on my eyes so as you guys can see very nice and very thin also very easy and it can just really help me to create the nice teeny tiny flick that i need on my eyes pardon by the way my dogs are a little bit like you know going crazy at the moment because i think there's a truck that arrived just like you know across the street from where i am right now chiyo say hi to everyone look at my dog shed <laughs> for someone so small he's like the one who like you know really barks the loudest i swear what's next okay now let's try that j146 brush now this is also one of my most favorite like you know eyeshadow brushes of all time and that's the reason why i decided to get it and i'm just going to apply a very like you know thin layer of eyeshadow into my crease just to enhance this um eyeliner look a little bit and i would like to use this color here so this has very nice, like, you know, golden flecks on it as well. And this will just really, like, you know, apply the color nicely here on my socket line. And this will just also help me to blend it out at the same time. Look at that nice transition shade. And it also, like, fits perfectly with my eye shape. It, like, you know, really sits well into my socket line. 
and it can also really help me to blend it out and to create the shape that I need for my eyes. Look at that, very easy. And then let me just like, you know, hold it at an angle and let me lift the eyeshadow look. Look at that, it enhanced my eye already quite nicely. So let me just intensify that a teeny tiny bit and add more color and intensity just to bring out my shape. Okay, that's it. So let's add some like, you know, drama here in the inner corner of the eyes using this very small brush. This is the G5515. So I'm going to be picking up this like, you know, very golden tone um, eyeshadow color and I'm just going to apply it here so that you guys can see. So again, this brush just really helps, like, you know, to enable you to apply a much more detailed kind of eyeshadow application on your eyelid. See how cool is that? And of course, if you want to be more detailed, you can also use this brush and you can, like, you know, like, for example, pick up this very sooty brown eyeshadow color. And you can even use this, like, you know, to apply, like, you know, detailing work into your like you know socket line or crease especially if you're into that like you know cut crease kind of a eyeshadow expression and with a J146 brush you can just use this to smudge that out and just like that with a few eyeliner brushes and a blending brush you're actually able to enhance your eye already so let me just like you know close out this eye look and let me just use my fingers to pick up this nice shimmery pinky color here and let me just tap it in just for like, you know, added drama. Okay, that's so cool. All right, so now let's talk about the S102 brush. And this brush, if you take a look at this at the Hakuhodu website, it is actually described to be as a finishing brush. Now, to me, when I read that, like, you know, in my head, um, I'm actually going to use this brush at the very end of my makeup routine, wherein I'm going to use this brush to remove any excess product especially powder from my face just so that it doesn't look too cakey. Now um, also on other thing as you guys can see the brush head here is actually very soft and you can see the way that they can, it dances very nicely on the planes of my face. So in us seeing this we will realize that this brush head will actually not disturb any product that you have applied on your skin which is actually perfect but like you know to me when I buy a brush like this, I'm not only going to be using this for that specific purpose because I'm going to use it in more ways than one. So at least now, like you know, in reading the description for this brush and also seeing on how it dances on the face, it can give me an idea that this will actually still help deliver like you know product on the face but the impact of color is not going to be like you know strong like a gold brush or something like that and of course by the way um before we go into like you know colored products i'm sure you can actually use this to apply like you know um loose setting powder so as you guys can see here the brush head actually picks up a ton of products so um if you have sensitive skin like you know overly sensitive skin and you find like you know goat haired brushes are like you know too strong for your skin this brush can actually um like you know be very helpful in applying setting powder but just take note on like you know how much product this picks up and just remove any excess at the back of your hand or, or on your palette and just you know use this in a like you know patting motion and always make sure that when you're delivering like you know these types of um, loose powder products with this brush so just apply the product in one direction like this you layer it in such a motion because if you have sensitive skin and if you start like you know using a brush in a buffing motion um, even if the brush head is made of like you know gray or blue squirrel here the buffing motion will actually like you know aggravate your sensitivity so always apply product in one motion like this because it's going to be a much more pleasant experience for you okay okay so right now i want to see if this finishing brush will pick up this finishing powder so this is a baked gelée formula so this is the finishing powder from laura mercier this is no longer in the market by the way because laura mercier has reformulated their finishing powders but the new ones are not here in the philippines yet but anyway so i can actually see that the brush head here did pick up a very minute amount of product so i don't think that this will deliver the right type of finish on the skin but there's a light slight hint of like you know 
um, of the finishing powder that I can see here on my cheeks. But um, if you want to build this, it's just going to take some time because you would have to like, you know, keep on picking up product and applying it until you get the like, you know, finish that you want on your skin. So at least in doing this activity, I have realized that this brush here is actually more perfect to use for loose powder type of formulas so made before like you know setting powders and I think like you know these um, loose blushes you like, can you know, loose powder blushes will actually be perfect so let me just pour a little bit of this here on the pan so this is my Mitsuyoshi Tonoko powder it's also a recent purchase of mine from Tokyo and I'm just pressing the S102 here on the pan and we can actually see that it did pick up the product quite nicely and I'm just going to pat it here on my cheeks and I'm going to try to blend it out oh look at that now I do have to say though that it's a little bit tricky to apply color using this brush head because like you know it actually when you pick up the product from the pan or from the palette and you apply it on the skin it's going to be a very precise application of color as you guys can see here but the problem that i can see is it's actually not enabling you to buff out the product on your skin i think it does but it's going to take so long for you to really buff it out so as you guys can see here and we have a very like you know stripey application of color so at least if you want to be precise with your blush application, you can actually use this um, brush for that. But if you think this brush will give you like, you know, ultimate blending ability, no, it won't. See, I've been like, you know, I'm just like in trying to blend it out. Of course, you can see like in the color diffused a little bit and spread to the other parts of my cheeks. But there's still a very like, you know, concentrated um, color application on this part of my cheeks. And it's not like you know softening at all okay so at least we know now what this brush can and cannot do okay so let me just remove any excess color here on a microfiber towel and let's try to see how well this will apply like you know bronzer so let me pick up this like you know plum and bronze palette from Viseart and let me tap the brush head here on this middle color and let me Oh, it actually applies a very, like, you know, thin layer of the bronzer, which is actually very nice. And by the way, this is a matte formula, and I actually love using squirrel haired uh, makeup brushes for matte types of, like, you know, powder products because at least you won't pick up a ton of it, and you can actually, like, you know, deliver a very nice, delicate layer on the skin and i actually love how this finish is looking on my skin right now and let me just apply a hint of that here on like you know my forehead and here on my jawline so again it's a very thin layer very delicate it just gives a very like you know gentle hint of color on your face so if this is like you know the kind of makeup application that you want on your face this brush is going to be very helpful for you. Okay, so I'm going to be picking up this contouring palette now. And let me get this middle shade here. And let me just tap it here on top of my cheekbones. And we can actually see that the bronzer has intensified a little bit. And I kind of like have a very nice hint of like, you know, shadowiness now on my cheekbones. But again, it's a very thin layer, so it's not going to be like, you know, too much. So again, this brush can actually be very helpful if you want to layer thin colors on your face. Very nice. I kind of like how this looks. So with the blush though, I just have to be very careful because maybe I just loaded a ton of like, you know, the loose powder on the brush head so at least like you know now i have an idea on how i could maneuver color using this brush okay and maybe as a final step let's try some highlighter so let's try this color here 
and let me apply this here on top of my cheekbones. Yeah, I can see a very minute amount of highlighter. Not so much. Let me try it here on the other side. Okay, so I think you guys can see that. You can see like, you know, the shimmer coming out. So at least like, you know, like at the end of your makeup routine and if you want to add like, you know, a hint of like, you know, um, highlighter but not overly so. Now this brush is actually perfect to use for that. When you just want to finish quote unquote your makeup off, just to bring everything together. All right. Fantastic. So I'm actually liking how the S102 has worked for me today. And I kind of like that, like, you know, with this activity, I hope that I have shown you guys what you can use this brush for. Like, you know, if you have loose powder products, you can actually use this, but just be very careful because even if the brush heads of these, like, you know, squirrel makeup brushes are very soft, they actually tend to pick up loose powder products, like, you know, excessively. And when you apply them, um, blending is not something that you can achieve with that, especially with this type of brush head design okay because it's going to be very like you know targeted and it's going to be very directional okay because if you want to have a brush head wherein you can actually diffuse color you have you have to have something that's flat and round or round in itself okay but i love how like you know it actually like you know delivered this very nice delicate color of bronzer and even contouring and highlighter on my face look at that very pretty okay and the final brush that i have here is a g6081 brush and this is the angle brush now guys i'm voicing over on top of my video because i found out after vlogging that during this part of the vlog um, it failed to record my audio. So anyway, what I'm doing right now is I'm using this brush to pick up pressed highlighting powders and this is called Albatross from NARS. And I actually applied this product using the brush on my brow bone and on top of my cheekbones. But please don't be surprised on how gold this like, you know, Albatross press highlighter from NARS was because like it is really the color even if it is white on the pan so um this kind of a color really like you know works differently in different skin tones but if you have lighter skin tones than i do this product will not work okay but anyway so i was actually very happy on how well this g6081 brush applied and blended out this pressed highlighting powder into my cheeks and the way that it just made it appear seamless and blended well into this like you know pop of blush here on my cheeks it was actually a very well blended um, um, highlighting powder and I was actually quite surprised on the blending ability of this brush. Now I also decided to try a different type of blush formula. So this is a like you know baked gelée like you know blush backslash highlighter hybrid and I'm gonna use this on the other side of my cheeks with the bronzer and the contouring. And um, one thing I have realized though when I was making this is that the brush only actually picked up the silver highlighting powder and it didn't pick up the pink um, blush tones of this. So, but anyway, so just like it, you know, the Albatross highlighting powder, it actually applied and blended out the product very nicely on my cheeks. And it, it was just enabled me to like, you know, layer the color nicely. And I love the angle of this because it can be very precise, but it was also actually able to make you diffuse the color quite nicely and I'm actually quite surprised on how like you know the strength of the core of this brush is because like you know a brush with a nice core can really help you to blend out products quite nicely and it's actually because of this activity like you know that I had a an idea that I think I can use this brush to apply eyeshadow products and that's what I'm going to be doing next so I picked up this very nice like you know pinky brown shade and like you know the idea that i had was i'm going to use it as a sort of like transition um eyeshadow and as you guys can see here when i applied it and blended it with this brush it actually applied a very nice diffused color on my socket line like you know very perfect for like you know transition eyeshadow application and maybe this is what I'm gonna use this brush for so I'm actually very happy with uh, the activity that we did today take a look at that like you know I'm even able to get into the inner corner of my eyes just like you know if I um, hold the brush at a different angle so again it's a very nice multitasking brush I love it 
Look at that. Look at my face. Look at my reaction. I was very happy with it. Okay, so that's basically what I think of the G6081 brush from Hakko Hold. All right, so that's my vlog for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed me showing you how I plan to use my new Hakko Hold brushes, especially my S102 brush. So this has actually been a very good activity for me today because this has just given me an idea of what I can use this brush for and in what type of products I can use it with. So I'm really, really happy with that. So um, anywho, so if you have any more questions about all of the products that I used today, all of the brushes that I showed you guys, please let me know down in the comments box and then let's have a conversation about it, okay? And also one other thing, if you do happen to have the S102 brush with you, please let me know what you use it with so that maybe I can learn something from you, okay? All right, so that's it for me today. I'm going to let you guys go now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye!